Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60, and it's another video on the E92325. Now this is the big service video where we're trying to, well, I'm gonna try and tackle all the little things that we need to do to get this car up to spec before it can be sold. Now to confirm, we bought this car at auction, um, and we have got a bit of a, a bit of a guessing game going on with what it costs to get reconditioned, and although we're getting close to being able to calculate it, there will be a separate video on what everything has cost once it is all finished, and I'm hoping to have everything finished within the next couple of days. But in this video, we're gonna do these items that we have on the table. So these are the main mechanical things that we felt that needed to be done before it had the roadworthy. So we have the two front lower control arms, uh, the inner bushes on the standard ones have just gone all soft. We have the oil filter housing gasket because it does have a lot of oil leaks, this thing. We've got a new set of spark plugs and it's just really to freshen it up whilst we're in there, we may as well do them. We have an oil filter, gasket and the o-rings for the sump plug we have a new air filter again i haven't actually seen the one that's in this car but while we're in there we may as well change it we have a set of sump bolts a rocker cover gasket now i've got that laid out with these sockets just to try and get it the right shape it actually comes scrunched up in like a ball which i didn't really like so anyway that's why it's laid out like that and underneath the rocker cover we have a sump gasket that is the big daddy, the biggest thing that we're going to be doing today, and it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. Now, I've never done a sump gasket on an N52 before, but looking at it, it actually looks like it's going to be an easier job than on an N54. Unlike the N54s, the N52... Shoot, let me grab a light. Yeah, the N52 doesn't have the power steering pump connected to the front of the sump, so hopefully we'll be able to get all that undone without too much hassle. The plan of attack so far for me, uh, what I'm probably gonna do is we'll start on top, but I'm thinking I'm not gonna take the subframe completely off. We'll just undo the subframe, undo the steering rack, and let it all sort of dangle down. And I'm hoping that's gonna give me enough clearance to pull the sump out, because the sump is pretty flat. Apart from, I assume, the pickup comes down here. So as long as we can get the back down enough, it should slide out and back. I'm thinking I don't know, three, four inches of clearance with the subframe down should be enough. Um, but the first part of the job is actually going to start on top. So I'll meet you up there and we'll start doing everything else. I thought I'd give you a quick talk through before I start actually working on it. Uh, although we are doing the spark plugs and the rocker cover, so most of this does come off, the main thing that I need to do on top for the sump gasket is get access to the mount or the, yeah, the engine lift mount because we're going to actually support the engine when we remove the subframe. You cannot pull the subframe down without supporting the engine from the top. Um, but again, because we have to get the other stuff off, I'm probably gonna take off the intake, the engine cover, all this top section, all that's gonna come off because we've gotta get it off later anyway. All right, I'm just gonna crack on. Guys, if you've got any questions about doing this before you start, hit me up in the comments below. Hopefully by the end of this video, I'll be a full professional. <laughs> all right, let's crack on with it. All right, so uh, I just thought I'd give you a quick update. We've got the top cowl off, uh, got the engine cover off. I've removed the air box and I'm not sure if I need to do that, but I think I'm gonna need to do it because I think I've got to take the intake manifold off when we do the oil filter housing gasket. But I'm focusing on the sump gasket for now and we do have access to the top mount, which you'll see how I rig that up very, very shortly. But I just wanna show you, I mean, there's a fair bit of oil residue around here. I dare say that has come from the power steering. And of course, we've got the oil up here around the oil filter housing gasket. We've got oil weeping out of this bung here, which is gonna get replaced with the rocker cover gasket. And then just, a, it's not too bad. In fact, it really doesn't look too oily, the rocker cover. So I'm really just confirming in my mind that we do need to do the sump gasket. So I was concerned that all that oil down the bottom was from Maybe a recent pressure wash at the auction has just blasted all the oil down. But yeah, I dare say we're definitely gonna to need to do the sump gasket. So that makes me feel a bit better about it. A little bit of oil here. It's all, it's not terrible. It's really not too bad. In fact, you probably could have just degreased it and got away with it, but let's do things properly. All right, so I think that's everything I need to do on top. From here, I'm going to get the engine crane or engine stay mounted up, and then we'll have a look underneath. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the top of the engine, well, the engine actually mounted with that cross brace. That ain't going anywhere, which now means we can start dropping the subframe down. Now, the process I'm going to do here, keeping in mind we do need to change these control arms as well. Um, I'll, I'll leave them for last. So we'll get everything else done and we'll do them last. But what I'm thinking, I'm going to undo the, six, the main six subframe bolts, let that hang down. We're going to remove the steering rack. We've got to take this cross member off, these plastic covers on each side. 
and I will reevaluate from there. Oh, and actually, the sub not the sub frame, the sway bar will have to come up, come off as well. So I'll get all that taken off, and I'll give you guys an update on how I think it's going to go, or if we need to remove anything else. But I'm hoping that's going to be enough. Okay, so the subframe is down. To do that, it was just the power steering rack come off the subframe. I undid all the power steering lines and it's just to give it a little bit more movement to flop around. Uh, well, when I say undid them, just unbolted them from the rack as well. Then undid the six bolts that hold the subframe on. And this is what we're left with. Now there's a fair bit of a gap in there. So I'm hoping that is enough and we can sort of stretch it down a little bit. I'm hoping that's enough to get the sump off. It's definitely enough to access all the bolts. I've undone this earth strap and the oil sensor wire. Can't talk today. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm gonna drain the oil out now and yeah, from then it'll just be a matter of trying to get a, get the sump off. Guys, this isn't going too bad. It's easier than I thought. I'm actually about 40 minutes in from when I started filming. So, and we've nearly got the sump off. That's good. It's quicker than an M54. All right, I just thought I'd film a quick update. Now I've got the sun plug back in, just loose, just to try and stop the dripping. Uh, but every bolt is out apart from two. And I managed to get to every single one of those sun bolts with my wobbly extension system that I had there and it all come off pretty easy. So I've got one just there and one right at the back. Hopefully the GoPro picks it up, but there's one in there. So I'm gonna take that off and we'll see if we can get the, or take those two off and see if we can get the sump drop down with the subframe there. Wish me luck. Okay, so it's catching on that bolt there. If you guys can see it, that bolt there. We need to go actually forwards, which I might be able to do. It's just like, I think it's just AC lines that it's hitting on. There it is. Magic. And it is catching on something at the front. Oh, more AC lines. This should be nice and fun to get back in. I think that is now going to come off. Miracle. Well, the sump is off. Okay, guys, so we've got a bit of an update. Um, it's about an hour since I last recorded to camera. And I'm not exactly sure what the last scene was, but just to clarify, we have the sump off. I have cleaned all of the mating surfaces, checked that the oil pump bolts are tight. Um, I haven't over talked them, I just made sure they weren't loose. And we've cleaned the pickup out. There was a little bit of crap in the pickup, nothing major. Like, I don't even know what it was, a little bit of flaky rust or something. But that is now cleaned out. Actually, it wasn't rust, it was carbon. That's what it was. Um, it just crumbled in my hands. So that is all pretty much good to go for the new gasket. Now you can just sort of see here on the original gasket, this particular edge is a bit shitty and it's rock hard. So this part that's supposed to be like a soft rubber is rock hard and that's gonna have to be scraped off of the pan. No drama, confirms that we did need an oil pan. Again, I'm glad about that. That's oh, right, an oil pan gasket. Now I did run into an issue and this is what's taken me an hour to sort of decide what I wanna do. These are the original oil pan bolts. There's 27 of them. They have these spaces on them and that's how long they are. These are the N52 bolts that I bought. They look very similar to my N54 bolt kits and they are too long. Uh, they're about 10 mil too long without the spacer and these spaces don't just come off. I've done a bit of research and I think what the case is, please confirm if you know otherwise, this is a steel pan 
and my N54 has an aluminium pan, and I think what it is, is the automatics run an alloy pan where the pan actually mates with the gearbox, where this pan actually comes up and there is a gap to the gearbox. So I think these ones, these short bolts suit steel pans, and these long ones suit alloy pans. Um, the biggest issue is I can't get bolts today and I need to get the car back together. So I'm gonna do something dodgy, wouldn't recommend it. I'm gonna reuse the sump bolts. I did actually do that on my N54, where when I swapped the sumps over, when I swapped engines, and that's been fine. It's just luck of the draw. Um, I'm not gonna talk these to spec. I'm going to talk them to what I think is tight enough and just see how they feel in my hand. It's gonna be a bit dodgy, but we'll see how we go. I reckon they'll be fine, but we'll keep an eye on it. Worst case scenario, I might need to do these bolts again in a few weeks. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I guess I will clean the pan and crack on and I'll give you an update once we're starting to put it back together. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. The gasket come off in a million pieces um, and unfortunately it did scratch the paint when I was trying to remove it off. In fact, here is the remnants of the gasket. She was definitely totaled. It is brittle and yeah, it appears to have become part of the metal. Uh, but we now have a nice clean surface and I have the new gasket there. I'll use two hands to put on because I don't want to bend it. But yeah, we're pretty much ready to try and slide the sump back. See how it goes. Okay, now unfortunately, the camera I set up, I forgot to click record, but the sump is back on. Now that was a little bit more difficult than I was anticipating. Um, and it was just trying to not damage the gasket as we slid it around the oil pump and up into place. But she's up in there, guys. If you're gonna do this properly, make sure you use new oil pan bolts and do the torque sequence as you should by BMW specs. I have just... everything over. I have just done these as tight as I think they can go without breaking. Um, and it's just because they've been reused. Look, I think it's going to be fine, but it's not the right way to do it. But hey, she's on there. It looks clean for now, though we've still got to degrease the rest of the thing down. I'm going to get the subframe re reconnected, the steering rack back on. Um, the sump plug is now back in place and torqued up, and it's got a new sump plug washer. And then we can start attacking everything from the top. All right, that's the subframe, steering rack, all the power steering lines all bolted back up. I did actually damage these rubber bits when I undid them, but I had spare ones from my N54, so they are replaced. Everything's looking good. We've still got to do a degree degrease because there is oil still running from down the front, or down the top. But I've just gone on to do the front control arms. I just thought I'd show you quickly. This one is the one I've just removed from the driver's side, and you can see it's actually quite easy to move by hand, which obviously when you got the load of a car on it, not very good, where this one, I only get like a mill of movement. So we'll put these ones on while we're under. All right, so unfortunately this is the only GoPro I've got at the moment, but everything is back on. It does need a degrease. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but it will get degreased before it goes for its roadworthy. But we've got the new control arms, the new sump gaskets in, subframes back on, cross brace, steering rack, sway bar, forgetting what things are called. I'm tired, it's hot. But yeah, we're getting there. And apart from the oil leaks, this thing is in bloody good nick. Had a good play with the engine mounts while they were loose. They're still really good. They feel like new engine mounts. Oh, it's good, all right. Now we need to drop it back down, get onto the rocker cover, the spark plugs, the oil filter, and the oil filter housing gaskets, which are on trucking tools on. Get on with it. Well guys, a bit more time has passed. Um, I just want to add some lunch to be honest. But now we need to get on to the top side of what I wanted to do today. Um, now I've had a bit of a look around, sort of working out a bit of a plan. I really don't think the rocker cover gasket is bad. In fact, I'd say the rocker cover gasket, hopefully you can see down there, has been done at some point. Um, but the oil filter housing, we have a lot more down here. I'm gonna see how I go. I'm having second thoughts about that. I need to do the plugs anyway, we'll see how we go, but let's crack on with the oil filter housing gasket and oil cooler housing gasket. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is put a tray underneath, take the top radiator hose off, loosen off the oil filter lid, and that will let all the oil drain out of this little compartment here, and obviously we're gonna drain the coolant out from the hose, and then from memory, you know, I think it is just the two, oh, no, there is three, so we've got three bolts or nuts on the oil cooler, that will come off, we can access that one. And then to get the oil filter housing off, we have one E10 down there, one E10 at the top, and one E10 just through there. So hopefully that'll be a nice quick job.
Okay, so we've got the oil cooler section of it off and you can see it's been peeing our oil down the bottom. Um, now I have been degreasing this as I go. I knew I was gonna be cracking the coolant line, so we've got the tray underneath, hopefully you can see it. So I've been trying to degrease it on the hoist and I have just sprayed some degreaser on here. But yeah, we'll try and clean off the alternator and all of this gunk as we go. But while I've got you on camera, we'll try and pull that gasket out and we'll see really how bad it is. When I was doing one of these on my M54, it was so bad that it come out in like a hundred pieces. Oh, it's not too bad, she's still a little bit soft. Oh, it's, yeah, it's brittle. She's definitely knackered. Well, that's definitely the main oil leak, I reckon. But we will do that one in there while we're here. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, that is now all cleaned up and I've got some overlay shots to show you what the main oil filter housing gasket was like as it come out. It was all crumply and not sealing properly. Cleaned off both gasket surfaces and tried to clean off as much oil as I can and made an absolute mess in the process. But I'm fairly confident that this is where 90% of the oil leak was coming from, just the oil filter housing gasket. So yeah, I think I'm gonna skip. Well, I've actually spoken to the person that's buying this car. They're happy for me to not do the rocket cover gasket yet. It's getting late, I wanna go home. Um, but no, I do wanna try and get this finished pretty quickly so I can get the video edited and get it on the trailer ready to go and get the road weather tomorrow. I am still gonna do the plugs, which you'll see shortly. And we're gonna do the oil filter, top it back up. But I'm gonna crack on, get the new gaskets on this, get the oil filter housing and the oil cooler, fit it back up, and we're nearly done. So I'm just going to swap the oil filters over. Unfortunately, the one I ordered, and I didn't realize when I ordered it, is one of a, it's a plastic top type, which I'll show you in two seconds. Let's get that opening. It's that style there, not the paper ends. Um, I just don't like them. And I know some people have had problems with the plastic end filters. We'll run it anyway, but we'll just see if it makes any noise. Oh man, this O-ring's been a biatch. God, that's not been changed any time recently. Uh, even though I got the shitty plastic filter, it does come with a new O-ring for that. So we'll replace that as I'll get rid of the old filter. So new O-ring for the top, and I have got a new main O-ring as well. That little sucker there. Nice to come out. Dropping oil on the clean engine bay. All this to get the angle, eh? New O ring. Sorry, new oil filter. Clipped on. Well, that is good to go. Back in the oil filter housing. Just gonna give it one last wipe out, and that'll be the oil filter housing finished. Reconnect to the temperature sensor. I think we're good. All right, I'm going to get straight onto the plugs. Uh, we've still got to put oil in it, but we'll get into that in a minute. But I'm going to do the plugs first. So we'll get all the coils removed. Okay guys, so we have the coils and the spark plugs there, that's cylinder one through to cylinder six. All of the coils are from 2016, apart from one, which appears to be an original coil made in 2004. It's always weird, and there's one different coil in every BMW we have. But these are all new Bosch coils, well, from 2016. Uh, the plugs are Bosch double platinums, and I'd say they have seen better days. Hopefully the GoPro is picking it up, but they are pretty cooked. The plugs I ordered from eBay to replace them, that were listed for a 325, 
uh, not Iridium. They're just a standard spark plug. Uh, they're not a platinum or anything, which means they're not going to last as long. I've just double checked Denso's catalog, and it is listed for a N52 two and a half liter 325. So the plug is the right plug. I've checked all the physical sizes, and it's going to go in fine, but it's not a platinum, so it won't last as long as a normal BMW platinum or Iridium plug would, but not the end of the world. Anyway, let's get them fitted up. Okay guys, just a quick look. I have been degreasing all under here. Um, I think it's gonna need to actually go with the pressure washers. There's so much oil still under it. But most of it's coming off. Definitely gonna be enough to get a roadworthy. Let's get it down, get some oil in, and we'll start it up. Well guys, it's about time. We have six liters of Penrite HPR5 in this little bad boy. Actually, no, sorry, six and a half liters. I did go all out, which is the full capacity. Now, I wouldn't normally put six and a half in, but because we've had the sump off and the oil filter out, there's a good chance most of it's gone. It may be a little bit over full, we'll see. But it's time to start it up, make sure it still runs. I'm gonna get some heat into it and just see how we go. Now, wish me luck. A little bit of a misfire there. In fact, it's running really badly. It is misfiring. Don't know why that would be. I'll do some delving. All right, it was just a loose coil. No big deal. All right, I'm gonna let it get hot. Just double check everything. We'll have another look underneath. Still so much oil around it. It's gonna need a full on degrease. But it looks like the main culprit was that. All right, I'll give you an update in a few minutes, but I think we're okay. Right, it's all back together. Uh, one last thing I've gotta do is check the oil level. Let's just start it up again and hope that that second start wasn't a one off. Make sure it's still smooth. If it's rough again, I'm gonna cry. Smooth. Oh, and this, what's it beeping at? What's it beeping at? As soon as it loads. But I think we're gonna be good, except Settings, no, not settings, we want info sources. Service. All right, we'll let that calculate. Uh, I think I've got to let it idling, but I'm just gonna rev it quickly because it sounds a lot better than it did. Yeah, so the plugs I was worried about, they actually seem fine. Um, the engine's definitely more responsive, unless it's the air filter. The air filter was quite dirty as well. The only thing that's bugging me at the moment, there is a little bit of a vibration, and you guys might be able to hear it if I do this. Now, we could hear that before, and I actually spoken to Jake about that, and he thought it might be the alternator. And with a stethoscope, I can hear that noise in the alternator, but I actually think it is the drive belt uh, tensioner. Uh, I'm fairly confident it's the drive belt tensioner. Something I completely forgot to order so far is a drive belt. So we'll try and get a drive belt tomorrow and actually have a tensioner off my N54, which is the same, which should do the job. So although we're going to get the road where they're done in the morning, um, might get it back. Make sure there's no oil leaks still there. I know that the oil leaks that are on that were there are fixed, I think and whatever's underneath will pass roadworthy. It's weird with the roadworthy laws, but um, I'm gonna leave the under trays off. We can check underneath, and when we get back, we'll fit a new drive belt and the new idler, and just see if that noise is gone, but it is smooth right now. Look at that idle, it's like 550 RPMs. It's nice, and it is smooth. I'm surprised it takes this long to do the oil calculation. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll turn it back on when I've actually got a display up there, guys. 
Okay, so it finally showed me the oil level. Looks like it needs another, maybe half a litre, so I'll get that added in. In fact, let's turn the car off. I'll get that added in. We're gonna make it to the roadworthy shop. It is just gone 8 p.m. Uh, it's gotta be at the roadworthy place at 7 a.m. So, I'm gonna have some food. Might load it on the trailer tonight. And um, yeah, I'll give you guys an update with how it goes, but I'm pretty sure it's all gonna be sweet. Everything's nice underneath. We've got indicators that tick. All the lights work. Oil leaks. A fix for roadworthy at least. I'm happy with it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This has been a long video. Sorry I didn't get the rocker cover done. I think I did mention it earlier, but I spoke to the person that's buying this car and they are more than happy to just wait and see how it goes. Um, they're the reason it's gonna get roadworthy tomorrow. It's a bit of a rush. So they're not too stressed as long as they can use the car. I'm happy with it. There will be a 0 to 60 on it next week. Maybe this weekend, we'll see how we go. Um, I kinda wanna get it timed as quickly as we can. And yeah, this car will be around on the channel. Somebody did say they were sad they were gonna see it going. Very good friend of ours. Um, you'll see this more than you see our old man's 3.30, no doubt. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Oh, and hang in for a full cost analysis of what this costs to get roadworthy. <laughs> That'll be in the next couple of days as well. All right, thanks again, bye.